Hi everyone, and welcome back to Smaller Waste for 2021 podcast. I'm Julia Schaefer. Hey, how'd you go with your first task? Did you dive headfirst into your family's garbage? What did you discover? I bet if you have teenagers in the house, or you've been in lockdown for some time somewhere on the planet, you probably found a lot of takeout, single-use disposable items. So today we're going to have a look at how we can leave a lighter footprint on the planet when we're on the go. Apologies to those people who are still locked down during COVID and can't get out. I really do feel for you. But it's just as important if you're ordering in takeout to think about those single-use plastic items that we don't want to send to landfill. In the last podcast, I referred to my favourite local coffee shop and how during COVID they were serving everything using single use items. Everything their food was on, their drinks were served in were all single use and had to end up in the garbage bin. And it was really struggling for me, really hard thing to do. I felt like on the one hand, I wanted to support this struggling local business, but on the other hand, I was just appalled at the amount of garbage they were creating. It was a real dilemma, hey? Perhaps you saw the same thing happening at your local cafe as well. So for the benefit of this week's episode, I'm thinking let's go back to pre-COVID and see how well or not so well we were doing here in Australia. I know I developed a habit because my husband's been off work for a couple of years of going to the shops with him. And we'd always seem to end up there around about lunchtime and had to have something to eat and drink because it's not sensible to go grocery shopping on an empty stomach, is it? So we'd sit down and enjoy our cafe experience with lovely bestowed mugs. But on regular trips to shop on my own, this is how it normally played out. Many people wonder why I own such a large handbag. Surely such a large handbag is just inviting you to carry more stuff. The larger the handbag, the more stuff you carry. If you're a mum, you know what I'm talking about. Well, the reason I carry such a large handbag is because in the words of the Scouts motto, I like to always be prepared. So what do I have in this handbag? The trappings of the way to fight my way out of a zombie apocalypse? Enough rations for three people for three days in case the aliens shut off the power? Or perhaps a life raft in case of looming tsunami? No, I'm prepared for an event much worse than all of these things combined. The event that I should be forced with the need to use single-use disposable plastics. So what is it that's in my Mary Poppins-esque handbag that helps me minimise my waste? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm hoping that you might choose to do some of this too. The number one thing I carry, which is used almost on a daily basis, is my keep cup. In Australia, we discard 50,000 cups every half an hour. Those cardboardish looking things that you get your takeaway coffee in. That equates to 2.7 million disposable coffee cups every single day, just in Australia alone. Those cardboard coffee cups that you get at the takeaway shop, well, they're so frequently and hastily discarded, they account for 1 billion pieces of rubbish each year and that always ends up in landfill. The cup itself contains a thin layer of plastic to stop the hot beverage from seeping out onto your lap or in the cup holder of your car or while you're walking around drinking it. And this film, when it is in landfill, it degrades slowly over time. It creates smaller and smaller pieces of plastic that choke our waterways and end up in the stomachs of our fish. Removing the need to use these cups is as simple as purchasing a keep cup and carrying it around in your handbag or your car. Look, there's lots of them on the market and I've had a variety over time. What I have learned is it's really important to get those keep cups that don't have an open mouthpiece, but rather have a tightly closed mouthpiece that will not allow for drips and spills if you knock it over accidentally in the car. Unfortunately, I learnt this from experience when I took a keep cup, had my cup of coffee and the dregs of it spilt in the footwell of my car. I hadn't noticed until days later I went back to my car and the smell was like a baby had thrown up in the back seat. 
just that little bit of milk that was in the coffee had gone sour and boy I could smell it throughout the car so from then on I used a keep cup that has a tight fitting lid that way I can just pop it in my handbag once I've finished my cup of tea or coffee and bring it home to get washed out so have a think about that when you go and investigate spending money on a keep cup of course one of the things that I really like to advocate is going to your favorite coffee shop and actually sitting down, absorbing the ambience, slowing down, spending some me time, some quality caffeine time, and sipping out of a nice bespoke china mug. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? I think we do need to really all learn to slow down and maybe might want to program that into your week rather than grabbing a takeaway cup of coffee. But if there's no time for that in your life, then having a keep cup is the next best thing. Number two in my Mary Poppins handbag is my water bottle. Beverage containers were the number two source of rubbish collected on Clean Up Australia Day. Still continues to be that way. Here's some bottled water facts that I want to share with you that you really need to know so you can make some informed decisions when it comes to choosing the water that you drink. Most of our bottled water that you buy is just glorified tap water. In fact, in Australia, we have some of the cleanest tap water in the world. There are very few brands whose water really comes from springs or mountain streams, but most are just tap water that's been purified. Only one out of five plastic bottles is recycled. The rest just become litter or get buried somewhere. It takes one PET plastic bottles 700 years to start decomposing. Bacteria, which usually helps in breaking down organic material, doesn't like petroleum-based plastics. Technically, they can last forever. More than 100 million plastic bottles are used worldwide every day. 90% of the cost of bottled water is due to the packaging, not the water at all. And it takes three litres of water to create one bottle of water. Can you get that? I want to say it again. It takes three litres of water in the process to make one bottle of water. Plastic water bottles are petroleum based and in the US alone it takes 1.5 million barrels of oil to meet the demands. An estimated 1,500 plastic bottles end up in waste in landfill or are thrown into the ocean every second. 1,500 a second, people. Plastic is listed as the number one threat to our marine ecosystem. And the energy, it used, the energy used to manufacture bottled water can power 190,000 homes. Now, hydration in our warmer climate here in Australia is essential, so it makes sense to carry water around with you in a handy bottle. And thankfully, they're very easy to procure, and they've become a bit of a fashion accessory with lots of gorgeously decorated stainless steel bottles on the shelves in most department stores, health food stores, and even fancy furniture shops. My preference is steel as it keeps things cooler longer and it's virtually impervious to damage if it ends up rolling around on the back footwell of my car. But you make your choice. Just choose to not buy plastic covered plastic bottles of water. Number three is my cutlery wrap, which I made for myself. And there's actually a YouTube video on my channel that explains and demonstrates how to do so. Very simple because it's just straight sewing. The cutlery wrap is my go-to when I'm buying takeaway or lunch on the run. It stops me from having to use disposable cutlery, disposable serviettes and disposable straws. My go-to snack on the run is sushi. I find it delicious and it's also quite healthy. So I also carry stainless steel chopsticks in my cutlery wrap just in case. I usually ask for a china plate rather than those plastic clamshell containers. I pour my sauce from the soy sauce bottle rather than accepting those little plastic fishes full of soy sauce. And I'm good to go to sit down for a meal that's guilt and waste free. Now we know straws suck and they are a real danger to our marine wildlife. And plastic straws actually made the top 10 items picked up on beach cleanups. In fact, in Bondi, a diver went down in Bondi Beach and picked up 300 straws in 20 minutes. 
Then she went back into the water again and picked up another 300 in the same area. They're used for about 15 minutes and then discarded. They take water and oil to manufacture and are a non-essential item. What happened to just drinking out of a cup or glass? Where did these actually start? I have no idea. To tell you the truth, the little stainless steel straw that I carry around doesn't actually get used very often because quite honestly, I can't see the point of it. But on occasion when I son shout my son Lawson, on occasion when I shout my son Lawson a smoothie or a milkshake, I ask the waitress to serve it in a glass with no, no straw, please. If he wants a straw, I have one handy. Number five is my handy dandy bread bag. Now what's a bread bag, I hear you asking. So if you can picture in your mind, two tea towels face to face, and with simple sewing, you stitch the three edges of it closed so you have an opening. If you're a simple creative person, this is very easy to do. Or you can buy a bread bag from, well, actually I found them at Howard's Storage World and you can definitely find them online too. So it's something that you take to the bakery to get them to put your bread in that bag instead of using the single use plastic bread bags that they, you know, if you buy bread at the supermarket. It also stops you from using those bag clips and metal ties that end up in landfill and, and choke animals on the beach as well. So it's great to carry a bread bag around. I've even found that the people at the bakery will slice the bread and put it in the bread bag carefully for me or Generally, I go unsliced and so I bring two loaves home in my bread bag and then we use the, put it in a bread container and then that bread's sliced and used as needed and one usually goes into the freezer. I also carry a smaller version of this around which is called a produce bag and it's a little bit lighter fabric. I made it out of a lightweight cotton and has a cord tie and this is used to avoid those single use produce bags in the supermarket, those plastic ones. So they're good for things like loose beans, spinach or mushrooms to save you using those plastic bags. So my Mary Poppins carpet bag serves its purpose by holding all of these items that help me to be a waste-free diner, shopper and sipper. Sure, the extra weight leaves dents on my shoulders, but I'd rather the dents of a heavy handbag rather than the weight of the world, the environment and its plastic choking destruction, wouldn't you agree? So your task for this week is to choose to implement just two of the ideas I've presented you with, be it water bottles for school and bread bags or keep cups and stainless steel straws. Of course, if you feel very inspired and like to take on all five, that would be wonderful and awesome. What do you think you're going to do? Leave a comment below and let me know your progress. And also seriously consider putting a chart on the fridge to show your family what their contribution is doing and how they're going such a long way to help the environment. What a great way to start the year. So until next week, this has been Julia Schaefer for the Smaller Waste for 2021 podcast. Thanks so much for listening. And if you'd like to hear more about how you can live a more sustainable life, check out Lighter Footprints on all the socials and my blog, www.lighterfootprints.com.au.